right, this is absolute cards on the table, honesty time. I am totally and utterly blown away by how good the Maserati MC20 is. I really wasn't expecting this car to be this good. So why is the MC20 such a major surprise? And what does it mean for the established supercar elite right now? Well, at 187 grand, it costs a fair bit less than the cars it's been designed to compete with, for starters. Two, its carbon fiber chassis might be incredibly stiff at its core, but this has allowed the suspension engineers to achieve genuinely incredible results with both the steering and suspension of the MC20. Three, it also looks quite beautiful in the flesh. With a subtle purity of design, inside and out, there's just a rare joy to discover in an era of wings and spoilers everywhere, of which the MC20 has almost none. Less really does appear to mean more in this case, except for the three litre twin turbo V6 engine, which, says Maserati, features F1 tech in its pre-ignition system and produces a whopping 630 horsepower and well over 700 newton meters of torque. I kind of have always struggled slightly to understand exactly what Maserati is all about, what, what the company stands for and what you should expect from a Maserati. Is it a kind of Ghibli from the 80s, 90s? Is it a Bora from the 70s? Is it an MC12, which is basically just an Enzo? And then you've got these strange new Ghiblis and Quattroportes, none of which have ever really hit the spot dynamically. They've always been very expensive. They've still had the badge, which has always accounted for an awful lot. But I can't think of a single Maserati that I have ever driven, actually, that I thought, wowee, that in its class delivers, over delivers, and in fact, nails all its rivals. And this thing is probably up against the stiffest competition that money can buy amongst sports cars at the moment. And yet, I think it could be my favourite car of the lot. I need to have more time in it. I need to think about what I'm saying a little bit more, because that's a big statement to make when you've got McLarens, Ferrari F8s, any number of 911s, but the top end of the 911 scale. Serious, serious competition. And that's before you even mentioned the brilliant Lamborghini Huracan. Let's have some more miles in it, because at the moment, I can't get my head round just how good this thing is. There are four different driver modes in the MC20, and you can alter the dampers separately within each mode, which is a nice touch, as is the fact that the steering weight and response remains completely constant across all the modes, which basically means it's always light, but always very precise indeed, and it doesn't change, no matter which mode. The brakes are carbon ceramics as standard, and they do need a touch of warming up before they bite properly, but this only takes a couple of corners, even when it's freezing cold, and once they're up to temperature, they work, like most other things on the MC20, quite beautifully. Okay, I've spent some more time in the MC20, driven it on some different roads, driven it down a motorway, driven it on some nice, fluid, fast A roads, and now I'm on this absolutely cracking beachy head road down on the south coast of England. And it's just even better than I thought. It's immense, this car. It's so surprisingly well packaged the whole lot. It's really refined. The drivetrain is superb. The ride is beautiful. The throttle response in all the modes, but particularly in sport and coarser mode, on this rotational button, you dial it back into GT mode. And then the ride chills right out. Nothing else changes, it's just the dampers. And I like that too. I haven't messed around with the steering weight or anything else. It's just the dampers that chill out a bit. I love this cabin. There's everything you want and nothing more. Not a millimetre more in terms of equipment, in terms of dials, in terms of instruments. It's just what you need and that's it. Really good seats, really good driving position. 
a couple of buttons on the steering wheel, but that's it, one of which fires it up, the other of which dials up the launch control system. And with launch control, yes, it is mentally fast. Second gear, Reiki Moses. This thing is savagely fast. It's, it's nuts how good this car is. I love the way it looks too. There's one slight disappointment in the way it sounds. I mean, okay, let's put it in third gear. Let's put it into sport and then actually hold it for a bit and put it into Corsa. So third gear. Then fourth. kind of a bit subdued, it's kind of back there somewhere and it doesn't have a real rip to it. Sounds efficient and swipe me, this car is very efficient. The gear change is just cracking as well, it's the same gearbox as you get in a Corvette, the latest mid-engine Corvette, but because you've got these huge great big fixed paddles and Maserati software, it doesn't absolutely snap through gears over aggressively but it does shift really fast and really smoothly. I mean it's it is stupefyingly fast this car. The torque it's got 750 newton meters but it feels like it's got about a thousand newton meters but it's all to do with the weight. The claimed weight of this car is 1,475 kilograms, and that includes a tank of gas. So it's not a kind of fake <coughs> Ferrari-style weight. I didn't say that, did I? It's a genuine all-up with fluids weight, 1,475 kilograms. And when you make that with 630 horsepower and 750 newton meters of torque, and then a brilliant eight-speed gearbox, well, it's good on paper. But honestly, this thing is so much more than the sum of its parts. It's one of those cars. I think it's the most surprising car I've driven in the last 10 years. There you go. It's that good. It is brilliant. So there you go. What a car the MC20 turns out to be. I'm still not sure where on earth its genius has come from within Maserati. But look, whoever was in charge deserves a deafening ovation. Because in simple terms, I reckon the MC20 is one of the most surprising cars I've driven in a very long time indeed. To a point where if I had 200 grand to spend on a mid-engine supercar right now, I honestly think this might be where it would go. Blimey.